Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we're going to talk about three retirement mistakes I've seen in 2022. And I saw them back in 2021 and I'm seeing them become more common and common going forward. So I wanted to share these and these come from our clients. I always say, you know, I want to take what we're seeing in our clients and people that I talk to on a daily basis and pass this information on to you so that it can actually help you out and make better decisions as you get close to an into retirement. The very first mistake I see is people selling their principal residence, buying a motorhome and leaving in that full time. And I will say this, having a motorhome is a lot of work. Buying a motorhome is a lot of work. I actually just got back today from buying a motorhome. So our family is kind of transitioning into motorhome phase. My wife and I both grew up uh, with motorhomes or trailers. I grew up with a tent trailer. We love camping and we want to spend more time kind of just camping through the summer and spending time with our family, and, you know, bringing those memories together. So we bought a motorhome to vacation and we're going to use it maybe 20 to 30 nights a week. For people that sell, completely sell their principal residence, buy a motorhome to live in and like nomad it, just go and they've never done it before. Now, I think a lot of you are looking to do that or have done that, and it might work because you've owned a motorhome, you've done that before, you lived in there for three, six months, but there's people that we talk to that are doing it cold turkey. Like they've never owned a motorhome, they've never traveled, they've never lived in a motorhome for more than two days, and they're going full all in both feet, which is a little crazy to me. And we've seen the repercussion with a few clients where they've actually done this, they don't like it, and they have to come back to where they lived before, buy something maybe a little bit smaller, they've lost 100,000 of realtor fees, maybe the market cooled off a little bit, all that. There, there are some issues that can arise. So just be aware, if you're looking to sell your principal residence and buy a motorhome or go live in a trailer somewhere full time, I would get your feet wet first, try it out, see if it's for you before you go in with both feet. We've talked to people that have gone both feet in and they've had to come both feet out. It's a very expensive mistake, especially as you enter into retirement. So don't do it the wrong way. The second retirement mistake we've seen in 2020, and again, going back to 2021, and I know we're gonna see this more and more, is people downsizing, but they're not making wise decisions where they're downsizing to and how they're downsizing. A lot of you, you might live near a big city, you might live near family, support, people that care about you, infrastructure, healthcare, all of that. I've talked about the healthcare piece before. What you're doing is you're downsizing from the house, which hey, maybe you don't need that much room, so that's great, but you're moving like way out of the city, out of the province maybe, and you're, you're moving too far. And you're moving too far for a few reasons. Either your support, like if you're near family, friends, that kind of stuff, your support system, you don't wanna go too far. Healthcare is another thing. A lot of you move far away and you move away from healthcare. And as you age, healthcare is something you need more of, not less of. So be very aware of that. You don't wanna to move to somewhere where there's no healthcare or very little support. I talked about it in a video not too long ago, we'll link it up above here, on healthcare. Some clients of ours have actually moved too far away where there's no in-home care support. They may not need it today, but you might need it one day. So as you downsize that house, which I think is a great idea for a lot of you, a lot of you don't need all that space as your uh, you know, walk through retirement, just be aware where you're downsizing to. Maybe you downsize closer to family. That's a great option. We have a lot of clients that have moved across the country to actually downsize and retire closer to family. They've done their job where they were, they're moving across the country to where you know their support network is, which is a great idea. So who's around you? Who's your support system? Is there healthcare? Is there you know transit if you need that? All these little things that come into play as you get older, there's a lot to think about, but make sure you kind of go through that checklist before you just jump into the downsize process. Now, if you're someone that's maybe looking at downsizing, not sure if you have to downsize, a lot of people we talk to say, look, Adam, we'd love not to have to downsize, but we don't know if we, we're going to need to. We might need some of the equity in our home to live off in retirement. And that's the reality for a lot of people. If you don't know, if you don't have that answer, and yeah, we might have to downsize, I don't know when that come. What happens when you downsize your home later in retirement, it gives you a big lump sum of money. So if you do that in your early 70s, let's say at 75, you downsize your house, which is great. Now you have maybe 100 to five million dollars sitting in your bank account big lump sum of money that you can use to live off of. But did you actually enjoy your go-go years of retirement, maybe from retirement to age 75, and adjust that plan, spend a bit more knowing that you're gonna downsize? I think as you head into retirement, it's very important to know, do we want to or do we need to downsize that house? And how does that impact the plan? Now, if that's you, whether you don't know if you need to downsize or you know you're going to, but not sure kind of how that lump sum comes into play down the road, taxes, using it for cash flow and all that kind of stuff, you need to get a financial 
financial plan done in place. So talk to your financial advisor. You know, if you don't have one, find someone. If you can't find someone, our office is always available. We do offer fee for service financial plans. You can visit parallelwealth.com slash planning and learn more about our fee for service offerings. What you don't want is kind of, you know, pinch the pennies up to 75 and then sell the house and have a whole bunch of money, but you're maybe too old or unhealthy to travel and do a lot of the things that you would have done earlier. So just make sure you understand what the cash flow looks like if you're going to downsize the house. The third and final one is people that sell their property and move out of the country. And this is becoming way more popular. And there's many reasons. I think there's financial, there's political, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. Not going to get into that, but there's definitely a huge jump in people leaving Canada in retirement permanently, like leaving Canada and becoming residents, you know, permanent residents eventually of other countries. Now I'm going to do a video coming up on what are the best countries to go to. But if this is you, if you're looking to leave Canada, you need to make sure you do your homework. I talked to way too many people that have no idea what the tax treaties are, what the tax situation is, how to become a permanent resident, how to get in. And most importantly, a lot of people miss this point. What happens when you leave Canada? There's something called exit tax. If you are someone that is thinking about leaving Canada and you don't know what exit tax is, you need to talk to your accountant and or financial planner. Your accountant is going to be the one that kind of manages everything together but make sure you get that plan in place now I'll say this we put plans together for a lot of people that leave the country now I am no tax expert in cross-border stuff I'm not a tax treaty expert in any other country I'm not but our specialty is building financial plans based on Canada. So if you move to, let's say, Portugal, the tax system's a little bit different there. So when you get a financial plan done, to, the, the purpose behind it is to understand roughly how much you can spend. Now, if the taxes are a little bit less in Portugal than they would be in Canada, you can make an adjustment. Is it perfect? No. But I would say personally, it's way better having a really good general idea of cash flow and where it comes from and, and taxes and all that than have no idea. And so a lot of the plans we put together for clients that are leaving the country or already out of the country that have some Canadian income and assets, we always say, look, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be really close and it's going to give you a really good general idea where cash flow, how much cash flow, you know, make sure you don't hit a big tax bill down the road, all of that. So when you leave the country, again, there's, there's no such thing as someone that does a financial plan for a Canadian leaving to Portugal. There'll be a financial planner like us who will have a general idea, understand, and if we don't, we'll look into the tax treaty. We'll have a general idea of how all the moving parts are, are coming together. But there's no, you know, Canada Portugal or Canada US or Canada Mexico financial planner that's going to have a financial planning software that kind of integrates both tax systems. So just be aware of that. Again, exit tax, understand that. Understand the tax treaty. Understand how you become a permanent resident. A lot of countries require a capital investment within their country. How much is that? How long you know, do you have to have it there? What's the rate of return? Like all this kind of stuff. There's a lot that goes into leaving Canada and there's a lot that goes into joining or moving into another country. So just make sure you understand that. So those are the three biggest mistakes I see. And again, I see them over and over and over again like these are things that come across my plate on a daily basis any of these three a lot of you will fall into one of these i would say 90 percent of you will fall into one of these three categories you need to understand kind of the other side of the coin on each one make sure you do your homework watch videos like this watch a lot of other videos travel videos you know all that kind of stuff out there there's a lot out there so you can do your research online get good information and then take that and move forward so thank you for watching this video i really do hope it helps out and we'll see you in the next one